Hey everyone, this is Dr. Drizzle and welcome to the National Parks Expedition Challenge. Today we're at the first state National Historical Park in Delaware. We're actually in Wilmington, Delaware right now at one of the sites, the Old Swedes Historic Site. And we're so excited to be here. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and give a little caveat here. There are gnats out here. So as we're doing this, we're just going to call it the Delaware wave. And it's not that I'm trying to get rid of anyone. So we're here with Ranger Lauren and Ranger Sam. Um, girls, thank you so much for allowing us to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to this park? Sure. So I actually have been here since 2015. Um, I'm a park ranger by title, but I do all kinds of things for the park. And that kind of stems from the fact that um, Coming on board really soon after the park was established, I was kind of the first hire and just worked really closely with the superintendent in starting up the park. So uh, yeah, so I've been here for, for quite a bit. Uh, prior to that, I actually got my start as a student experience employee, I forget the old acronym, but it was an old um, internship onboarding opportunity for students that were in school. And I was in graduate school at the University of Hawaii. And so I had the very fortunate start of my NP NPS career at the World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument, which is the Arizona Memorial in Pearl Harbor. Uh, I was there for two years came back East Coast, back home. My mom was pretty thrilled about that um, and worked in Philadelphia for three years before coming here to First State to help start up a brand new park. So you're one of the official park hoppers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, short, I've been in the park service for uh, just about 10 years, uh, but I've been to a few parks already, so I'm happy about that. Excellent. And how about you, Sam? I am actually originally from Michigan. So a little more of that Midwestern vibe than the East Coast. I went to Central Michigan University and got my degree in Parks, Recreation, and Leisure Services. To graduate, I had to do a 30-week internship. So I headed down south to Harper's Ferry National Historical Park and Potomac Heritage National Scenic Trail. Did 30 weeks there and then jumped over to Delaware and did another internship as the Centennial Volunteer Ambassador which is where the Park Service was celebrating their 100th anniversary, so they were bringing all these extra helps to make it an exciting birthday. Yeah. And then I spent two years as an intern for First State National Historical Park and got my permanent position as the park's first educational technician three years ago. Well, so you're both here now. We're glad that you're here. So are there more of you at the First State National Historic Park? Just a few. Okay. <laughs> So we have the park superintendent, we have a facility manager, uh, he has a permanent seasonal under him who maintains all of the trails, does all the mowing. We have a park biologist and then us two and we have an amazing intern who manages the entire volunteer program across the seven sites yeah. and Lauren and I would go crazy without her. So <laughs> nice. that's it. I That's love the little staff. shout out to the intern. You heard that. Yeah. Well, so, we were all interns at one yes. point, right? Like, that's how you kind of get your start. So and we understand it. <laughs> she does more than an internship. She, yeah. she deserves way more. <laughs> Excellent. So tell us about this park. Why are we here today? Oh, OK. So the park was established by presidential proclamation in 2013 by President Obama. Uh, the original designation was a national monument, and that included three sites across the state. In 2014, it actually was redesignated as a national historical park. And with that redesignation came four more sites. So first state national historical park uh, consists of seven sites throughout the state of Delaware and a little bit into southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, and those seven sites tell Delaware's story, really. So from early European settlement in the 1630s, of course, the Lenape were here. So, so we, um, in a lot of our programs and interpretive materials, we make sure to talk about what that was like when the uh, European settlers arrived and what their relationships were like with the Lenape. Um, and then we kind of, ac across time and across sites, jump through, you know, becoming a state and, and becoming a nation and the different players that were involved and the different 
pivotal moments in Delaware's history, uh, all the way up to when Delaware ratified the Constitution to become the first state in uh, 1787. So it's, uh, there's a lot of history. And it, I would say that what's really special about this park is that I would assume it's atypical from what most uh, of the visitors ex uh, visitor experience is like across the park. So, you know, we don't have one fixed boundary. We aren't um, fixed on one story or key moment. You have these collection uh, of sites and stories and resources, natural and cultural, that come together to kind of tell you these different pieces throughout the state. So it's pretty cool. We like the fact that we have so much room and so much, so many things to talk about and definitely a lot to get excited about. And there are a lot of stories as, as we've been learning about the park and learning about Delaware, you know, it's a young park. Um, so we're still doing that. You know, we're, we're lifelong uh, learners here and there's a lot to, to absorb with the park, but uh, there's a lot of pieces that are still relevant today. And I think that that kind of speaks to, you know, being the first state, but all of those things that happened after the fact that, you know, maybe maybe they didn't plan out that way. Well, it reminds me a lot of a family scrapbook. Yeah. So it is telling the story of Delaware. So from top to bottom, can we just name through the sites? Sure. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. So starting up at the Delaware Pennsylvania borderline, we have the Brandywine Valley unit. And so that has about 1100 acres and 18 miles of trail. So we always say that's a recreation area, right? Like they that's where you can hike, you can bike, you can ride horses, you can do all that fun, amazing stuff. And then moving south to Wilmington, kind of where we are today, we have Old Siege Church. And then just about two, two and a half blocks that way is Fort Christina. So going a little farther south as we travel through the state is Historic Newcastle. That is where the Newcastle Courthouse Museum is and the green there. Then going to the middle of Delaware to Dover, which is the capital of Delaware, is the Dover Green and the John Dickinson Plantation. And then all the way at the bottom of Delaware and Lewis is the Rives Bolt House. So together, those sites tell the story that Warren mentioned. So maybe sitting on front porches and, and telling the story of Delaware, you can do that through all of these different places. So I know that we wanted to talk about something pretty special yeah. here. Um, and we're filming this in October of 2020, if you're watching this next year. So we're, it's kind of a, appropriate thing to be talking about, but what's all the talk about the 19th Amendment here? Why is this sort of a, a way we can tell the story? Yeah, so August of 2020 was the, um, the centennial of the passing of the 19th Amendment. So uh, there were, across the country and across many parks, there was a big celebration to for every park and every citizen to kind of challenge you to find your connection to it. Uh, what's special, kind of bringing it right here to where we are, what's special about Delaware's story and relationship to the 19th Amendment is that we have multiple sites out of those seven that connect directly to it. So right here at Old Speed's historic site, there are many suffragettes uh, buried here. There are many anti-suffrage uh, um, citizens buried here. And, it's, and I think that that goes to show that, you know, either you're always going to have both sides of the story. You're always going to have, you know, different voices being a part of this, nat this national conversation. Um, so this is one place where you can kind of learn more. You can walk around the grounds. Um, you can really get into their personal stories. But just like anything else, as you trace back their history and kind of their path, uh, it also directly can, a lot of their stories also connect to the green in Dover, Delaware. So as Sam mentioned, that's our, that's the capital for Delaware. And one of the sites, a part of the park, it's the Dover green, and it is a community space. It is literally a green space, but what's so special about that and what we have to remember about, you know, hundreds of years ago is that was where the community collected. So where we might see pretty grass, it's kind of, simple but you look around and you see all of these civic buildings and you and you start to kind of put yourself back in time and think about how you know this is where women were demanding their voice to be heard and this is where they fought for Delaware to be the 36th state to ratify this and to to send it home and ultimately Delaware rejected the vote so you know that's an important story I think in Delaware's history as the first state to ratify the Constitution, right. but ultimately did not vote on something that was so important to 
to us, to, to everyone, and to, to Delaware. So we're standing outside of the old Swede historic church where we mentioned that there were suffragettes buried here. Um, do you have any stories to tell, any special connections? Yeah, I am actually really inspired by Florence Beard Hills who is actually buried right over there. Her story really just it inspires me because family means so much to me and I'm also very opinionated. So. Like her, I always want to follow my dreams and push myself as hard as I can to get to my dreams. But for her, she almost had to sacrifice her family a little bit because mm -hmm. they thought she was misbehaving. You know, women back there, they had to appear a certain way. They had to act a certain way. And unfortunately, speaking out and having a voice mm -hmm. was not that way. So her going and going to the fair and seeing essentially like getting inspired by someone else and then going after her dreams, but also having to make those hard sacrifices, that's what inspires me. So I just love learning more and more about her and I don't want to give any mu too much away because <laughs> I want everyone else to go Absolutely. learn, but I just, I can't get enough of her story. <laughs> what about you? Um, so broadly, I am, very i i did one of those like dangerous deep dives like late at night when i should have been getting ready to go to bed <laughs> on um library of congress's uh website around the centennial in in, uh, in august when we were just drumming up a lot of our own research to have uh, social media content going the whole month so i started looking more into the the cent uh, sentinels the silent sentinels i want yes. to make sure i said that right um <laughs> And, and they, you know, they picketed right out front of the White House, you know, with their signs and, and just stood there like this silent force. And I just think that women taking up space, as Sam said, like back then, and just demanding to be seen and be heard and saying, we're not going anywhere. You're not going to scare us. This is what we believe in. And we are going to be here through this. We are going to fight for this. Um, that was a really special moment to me. And the photographs, the historical photographs on Library of Congress website is just fantastic. Um, and I also had a little special connection to uh, learning about Edith Garud. She's actually not uh, from the United States of America, but she was a little five foot, like me, <laughs> suffragette who taught the women jujitsu so that as they were being attacked, they knew how to defend themselves. Nice. And that is just so cool. We're talking about the early 1900s, so right. just really cool. So everyone's sort of using their talents um, to get their passion across. And there are so many other stories that we can read about. Um, and I'm going to give you a list of those to look up. So. We are standing outside of Old Swedes Historic Church. Can you tell me anything about this place? Why is it special? Why are we here? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll kind of start and then please jump in because okay. I, I, um, I'll probably miss some things here. But so as one of the seven sites of First State National Historical Park, Old Swedes Historic Site and its burial grounds really hone in on that initial settlement here. So. Obviously, it wasn't Wilmington in the 1630s, but when the Swedes landed um, just a, a, a mile or two down the river on the Christina River, uh, they set up a fort there. They named it after their eight-year-old queen, Queen Christina in Sweden. Um, and then from that, you know, they came a little bit up, up on the hill here, and the, the burial grounds were in the 16... 1638. 38. Um, and then so the church was actually completed about 60 years later in the late 1690s. Um, and so that's, that's the, the general history of the church. And what we're, where we're standing is actually the original front entrance. So uh, I'm sure in your camera, you're probably gonna get the front, you may get some extra footage, but what's cool about here is the wooden doors behind us, over, over time when they were doing a lot of preservation work here, they started stripping away layers and layers of paint on these original front doors, and they basically found historic graffiti. So some of the dates and the, and the images that are carved on the doors are hundreds of years old, and it's really neat. Yeah, and we've talked about historic graffiti before in places like Mammoth Cave oh, cool. and how that sometimes that that's a good thing. Like we, we see that as a diary of what's happened. Um, very interesting. Anything else about this place? I just, I'm always fascinated by all the different gravestones that you can find here. You know, like Lauren said, this, this burial ground dates back to 1638. 
And so there are thousands of people buried here. Mm -hmm. And it's actually an active burial ground today. So you have from 1638 to active burials today. That's a lot of history. That's a mm -hmm. lot of stories to learn about. So I, I don't think you can ever stop learning here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fascinating with the city being so, you know, close and on top of it now. But um, yeah, it's just you have just a really short segment here on this block of 7th Street that gives a lot of history to the European settlement here. So if we weren't in a time of a pandemic, would this be open to the public? Could they come and do a tour? But yeah, you can get a tour inside the church and they do amazing haunted tours where you can actually come in October in person and take a tour and they'll actually have characters and telling those stories. Mm. So you can walk the grounds at night with a guide and learn the different stories. But they do regular tours during the day all throughout the year as well. So even though this is a graveyard, it's also a great place for living history because yes. we're, we're looking at names and mm -hmm. then thinking in our heads, where are their ancestors now? Mm -hmm. Like, do they still live around here? Is there a large, do you know if there's a Swedish population still in Delaware or Wilmington? Yeah, I mean, you, it's, it's pretty easy to find, to, it, when you meet people, it's easy to sort of start to hear like those two degrees of separation. Um, you know, my family's been here for generations or, you know, I'm, I'm a Swedish English you know, kind of hybrid in my uh, ancestry. So there's, there's a lot of that here. So, wow, a lot of information today and a lot more that we're gonna share on the website. But we always give our students a STEM challenge and this is gonna be a different STEM challenge than we've ever done before, but I think it's gonna be great. <laughs> so as we learn more about the suffragettes and we learn more about these women who despite being maybe ostracized by their family are being, um, afraid for their safety, stood up for what they believed and they wanted to make sure their voices were heard. So we are going to challenge all the girls and guys out there to think of a cause that's really special to you. Now that could be a cause that's special to your family, but I want to encourage kids that your voice needs to be heard too. And we want you to identify something that you're passionate about and come up with a social media campaign to get mm -hmm. that uh, message out. So it could be that you're passionate about um, dogs and cats that are left on the side of the road and you wanna fight for the Humane Society, or it could be you have a relative that's sick and you wanna fight for you know, a cure for that. It could be something in the political realm. It could be that you're anti-bullying because you're being bullied a lot. We want to encourage you to sort of take over the spirit of the suffragettes and make your voice heard. I know that my friends here would love to see what you come up with because the way that we can honor those that have gone before us is to continue that work. So they were talking about the right to vote, but you have rights too. We want to see what you come up with. Make sure that you share your ideas on social media, hashtag Nat Park Challenge and hashtag Expeditions in Education. And we will share with Lauren and Sam so that they know that this virtual field trip struck a chord with you and that you want to continue um, being that person that is kind and compassionate, but is also able to give your voice over to others. Ladies, <laughs> thank you so much for this. This is a beautiful place. And you know the gnats sort of don't bother me now, so I'm not sure if they just <laughs> infested me or they just left, so whatever way that is. We talked earlier on the phone when we were first talking together. We want to encourage our kids to work at the national parks, if possible. And we have a lot of kids that want your jobs. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> but they want your job. So if you wouldn't mind just looking in the camera, Lauren, we'll start with you and just give them a piece of advice about how they can work themselves up into the parks. Yeah, so um, I encourage you to take my job. We want the next generation in the National Park Service. Uh, so the best advice I could give is to not think narrow about how to get into the service. There are so many different job titles in the agency. So park ranger as a job title can mean you have a background in biology. It could mean that you have a background in architecture. That's me. My, my degrees are in architecture and historic preservation. So um, 
you know, you can kind of pick different things. There's finance. Oh man. Um, all kinds of different ologists, right? Different scientists. So I would just say to first think about what it is that you're passionate about. Find that broad category and then find ways in rather than starting super focused and maybe getting a little frustrated about the uh, onboarding opportunity. But always intern, always give yourself plenty of experience as much as possible because that's going to aid you in your in your resume and, you, and it'll help you kind of, I thought I liked this and I don't, I like this. Uh, so definitely get as much experience as possible. There are so many youth organizations out there that get kids in parks for that exact reason. And what about you, Sam? Yeah, piggybacking off of what Lauren said, I, I think that you have to figure out what you enjoy doing because going to work every day and doing something you don't enjoy is not very fun. So figure out what you enjoy doing and then get out and start volunteering. Do some research, find some youth organizations, get involved. Like Lauren said, you might think you like something and completely change your mind. I know I did. So definitely get out there, have fun, and get involved and volunteer. Well, we have had an amazing day at the first state National Historical Park. Did I get it right? Yes, got it. Excellent, in Wilmington, Delaware for this particular site. Um, we're gonna start something new with the National Parks Expedition Challenge. We're gonna start adding some books to it. So I'm gonna encourage you to read Around America to Win the Vote. It's Two Suffragists, A Kitten and 10,000 Miles by Mara Rockliffe and History Smashers, which is a new series by Kate Messner who is telling us the real deal with history and sort of taking away all the myths. So I want you to read these books and get back to us. Thanks so much for joining us today. We are ready to keep changing the world with the next National Parks Expedition Challenge. This is Dr. Drizzle, out. <laughs>